What's up, everybody? It's Chris Mohini here. I'm in my car. I'm heading down to the protest in Pittsburgh. Uh, the protest, uh, justice for George Floyd and pretty much everybody that gets killed by the cops. Uh, Pittsburgh has had its fair share uh, of killer cops. So there's a protest going on today. Um, I want to go down there for a couple reasons. There's always a uh, argument when when uh, subjects like this come up um, about protesting and rioting and things of that sort. And I think it's important to get the accurate story on this on the streets because uh, a lot of details get conflated. Um, there's also evidence of provocateurs that specifically start and incite violence that the corporate media is not going to talk about. Uh, only independent media and apparently fucking comedians are going to uh, gonna go and uh, and talk about. Um, so uh, yeah, I want I want to make sure I document that. I'm gonna try to talk to some folks. If some folks are cool with uh, talking to me, um, they might not be, and that's okay. I just want to get some footage of of what the, what the what the protest actually is. Uh, so that's that's primarily where I'm there, why I'm going there. I've got I've got my mask. I've got some extra masks for people down there to hand out if anybody needs a mask. Uh, I've got my jar of water, uh, and then I've got some bottles of water to also hand, hand out to people that uh, that need it. Because uh, here's the here's the deal: we got to take care of each other in these sort of situations, right? And and this is sort of the way uh, that the mutual aid spirit uh, lives on, and uh, and and and, and uh, the 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 mutual aid revolution is is carried forward. Um, so I want to make sure to do that to take care of some folks. So, um, yeah, this is an important, uh, topic of conversation. I know I've done a lot of videos about it. I know I've gone in depth about this subject several times. Most of those videos do get suppressed. Um, so I, I, I just want to, I don't know, do something to show solidarity to the people that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still also my people. They're still part of my community. Uh, these are working class people, uh, and I, I consider myself to be part of that. Um, so I want to make sure that, uh, that we are accurately represented uh, rather than uh, people just yelling about, oh, the Target should be safe. Target's going to be fine. You could have also uh, bitched about Target whenever fucking Target wasn't treating its employees properly. But you didn't. Uh, and now you're just like, oh, but the rioters, right? And like, that's when you care about Target. It just, it's just, it's shitty. That's all. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for real words for it and everything. But uh, that, that's part of the reason why I wanted to go there. Um, also, I'm sorry if the, if the audio quality in this video isn't particularly super awesome. Um, I don't have like a external mic or anything that I was able to grab. I kind of found out about this a few hours ago, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, I'm heading down there. So let's see what we can, uh, let's see what we can grab. Uh, hopefully it'll be some good footage. Hopefully it'll be worthwhile. Uh, thank you for tuning in and, uh, let's, uh, let's head to, let's head to this protest. So I am currently stuck in traffic, uh, which is crazy because, uh, are, like, are we not supposed to have a bunch of people on the streets, but this is, this is like, where, where are we back to traffic? That was like one of the best things about the whole fucking pandemic thing. It's just like, we're not going to have traffic anymore. Everybody's working from home, but this is crazy. This is crazy. All right. Hopefully I'll get to this protest soon. Hopefully it won't be over by the time I get there because of all of this crazy traffic situation that's happening. Solidarity, people. All right. So... Got some protesters marching, and around here, horse cops. The horse cops have arrived, Just blockading the streets.
Uh, there was a point in the protest where um, everybody was marching peacefully and these two douchebags on bikes decided that they were going to rev their engine and try to drive through the fucking protest, which caused like a micro stampede and me and my buddy got caught in it. Uh, and we were trying to make sure that everybody was getting out safe. He got, he got scraped and then I got... Uh, I, I was fine. I fell, and I was fine, but, you know, um, they don't fucking need to do that. And then, and then now you're going to see what, what, what happened right after that. We just had a weird uh, incident where two gentlemen on a motorcycle decided to scare the shit out of everybody. So that was almost a bad thing. So we got a couple people here. Making sure everything is safe. There's the motorcycle scare, guys. It's just them hanging out. I guess they're here for the protest. They just got too easy. Yeah, I don't know what they're dealing with. Shut it down! Shut it down! We shut it down! We shut it down! 
We shut it down. We shut it down. We shut it down. Police! No peace! Police! We shut it down! We shut it down! Lady, get up the hill. Oh, well, the loose bike is here. <laughs> kind of circling around like a fucking vulture. He's the only person harshing the vibe of this protest. We're trying to do this. We're trying to end police brutality. And he's getting in the way. <laughs> Alright, so. We just got word that somebody smashed a police car down here. So we're gonna keep our eyes and ears open. We're not sure who did it. We're not sure if they were part of our part of the protest or not. Could have been like those uh, douche bikers, you know, just kind of being douches. people here to shut down the parkway which is impressive very impressive another weird almost trample moment we had a bunch of horse cops here show up out of nowhere oh, they're throwing, they're throwing stuff at the police they're throwing yeah. water bottles
people kind of make their way down. And they're just kind of circled around. We're trying to keep it peaceful. Throwing some chants out. All the organizers are trying to keep it peaceful. Trying to keep us moving. I can see the siren lights just on the bottom. Yeah, they're on top of the top car over just, there. Like, and matching the top car. But it doesn't look like they're part of the organizers or anything. They're just kind of a real bunch. Oh my god, they're chasing the horses! Oh man, they're chasing the horses out. They're chasing the horses out. They pushed the horse cops out. Stampede of folks over there. On that side. <clears throat> Top car. Over here. On this side, things are starting to descend a little bit. And they're burning the top. There's a man climbing up a pole over there. Tow no truck. I think that's trying to get the top car out of there, but I'm not sure. Things are slowly descending. I don't know how long I'll, I'm going to stay out here. Look at that. They spray painted the hood and the hood is up. They're, they're going oh, after they the got, engine. They, yeah, they got the hood up of the car. I'm not zooming in because I don't want anybody to get in trouble. I don't want any facing. But there's a lot of people on this side. significantly far away from it but you can see that that tornado of smoke uh, that is coming up that is that is from the, the, the police vehicle that is fully engulfed in flames at this point. that is fully engulfed and uh, I would not be surprised if the uh, with the horse cops being run off and this happening now that uh, the police don't come and uh, escalate situations even further so uh, hopefully this will not go any further than this. Uh, some people are leaving, some people are migrating into to join the crowd of that. Uh, so yeah, this, this this turned into the turning point. There's a man on the sign up there. Uh, yeah, this turned into a point. It's, it's the turning point now. This is the turning point. Right. So, so we moved away and finally the cops uh, moved their barricade so all of the vehicles that are stuck on the on-ramp can get off of the on-ramp which is what they need to do, which uh, I think some of them are trying to do now. So yeah, things kind of escalate. You can still see some of the smoke in there as well. Uh, okay, so I'm back. Um, I'm re-recording this because I have a few thoughts on the footage you guys just watched. Um, the initial recording was uh, rather emotionally aggressive, I guess. I don't know. I didn't partic I didn't like it. Um, I have a couple things to say. I left, uh, when I felt like I needed to leave. I was there with a friend. Um, he also didn't feel comfortable staying past a, a particular point, And I won't talk about that. Uh, first of all, I, I have a suspicion that the gentleman in the motorbike, the two dudes that showed up in the motorbike that were kind of hounding the protest, they were, uh, they were chasing the protesters in a way. I have a suspicion, uh, this is a conjecture that I am making based on everything that I've seen, and I will walk you through how I arrived at this conjecture and why the suspicion to me seems like something 
uh, that should be taken seriously and investigated. Um, it seemed like they might have been undercover cops or some kind of provocateur that were specifically there to rile up protesters. The initial point of it was when they tried to drive through the protest um, and were kind of proud of doing that. Uh, it was very strange. I was pretty close to it. My, my friend and I kind of got caught up in it and we fell and we were trying to get people to make sure that people weren't going to be trampled or anything. And they were very proud of what they did. Had a very proud look on their face. The second time we saw them, so they sped off up the street and we thought they were gone. The second time we saw them, they were back on the same street, but they were behind us somehow. How the fuck did that happen? Which means they probably circled back around. The one gentleman, as you saw in the video, turned off his bike and was just patiently waiting. And some people were posing and taking photos with him, whatever. The second gentleman was the one that I was particularly um, concerned about. And uh, he was revving his engine. He was, you know, circling and going into a parking lot, hopping the sidewalk. And there was a police officer there. There was a cop car there, an SUV, whatever. And uh, did nothing, did nothing. This guy's clearly being an, a nuisance, harassing protesters, did nothing. Uh, not a goddamn thing because the cops want that. They, they, they want somebody uh, creating disturbance and, and riling people up so that the protesters do, be, you know, it does end up becoming violent. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the protest organizers were very nice and they, they put up a blockade so that no traffic would run through any protesters, right? And they were doing the chants as you saw, and he was just kind of being very antagonistic, like flipping off the protesters and stuff. And at the end of it, when they were moving, I remember turning around and seeing a cop bike pull up, meet these two bikers, and, uh, and, and just escort them away. And they kind of just left. And the, you know, the second biker uh, who was on a ninja or whatever, the crotch rocket. He continued his ride down the sidewalk and then hopped off and kept going. And we thought that that was going to be the end of it. But then they showed up again. They circled around and met us at the intersection and revved up their bikes and were being very loud. And then as we went up the hill, uh, they followed us up the hill. And I didn't get this interaction because it just, it kind of happened real quick. And I was trying to keep my wits about me. Because at that point, we had also learned that somebody had set a, uh, broken into a cop car. Which, let me get into that in a minute as well. Uh, there was somebody, part of the protest, that went up to, to, to that aggressive biker, the, the aggravated biker. And asked, what's up? What are you doing? Why are you here? You know, are you part of this? Why are you doing what you're doing? Sort of thing. And he stonewalled her. Uh, and then he kind of just worked his way through. And, and um, I saw my friend's video where they popped up on the video. And I was like, holy shit, there they are. And they're, and they're kind of just there, you know. And they're, and they're kind of blockading the, the protesters from going any further. And um, it seemed very, very odd. They were doing all of these things. They were antagonizing the protesters. They were putting us on edge. I mean, they drove, they like tried to ride through it. So my suspicion is that they were, um, they were either undercover cops or hired by the, the cops as instigators because they were very, very, it, their behavior was very peculiar. The police cars I just saw the video of the gentleman breaking the cop car, and it's just some white kid. 
And then there was a bunch of other white kids that were like getting in the way of this guy filming and, and like yelling at him. And he was just like, hey, this is not helping the situation. We don't want this to be the narrative because this will end up being the narrative. And the kids like flipping him off. Kind of like the same behavior the dude on the bike was doing. I know I'm 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 making some conjectures and extrapolating, but it very much seems to me that certain things were orchestrated by some level of provocateurs that were maybe put into place or maybe not. I'm not sure, but I think it's worth looking into. Following that, the police car was uh, set on fire, which was not the intent. And as you saw, too, the, the, the horse cops showed up, but then the horse cops were, like, antagonizing the protesters as well by rushing them and creating a stampede situation, similar to the bikers. I say all this because I want you to know this is conjecture. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this is definitive proof or not, but I do think that it's worthy of note and it's worthy of an investigation because the narrative is going to be spun that Oh, well, protesters are all violent. Oh, we have to discount what they say because of violence. Well, what about the cops? The cops, are, the cops are violent, and they excuse all this behavior. Seems a little fishy. I was watching my friend's live stream because we left. We heard, we heard the flashbangs when we left. Um, we didn't feel safe, and I, uh, I don't know, have guilt about it? I talked to my friend, I talked to a couple, uh, I talked to a few friends of mine, and my sister. And they told me not to, and I get it, but I kind of still feel like I have guilt about it. I saw my friend's live stream and things got wild. A Mustang drove through a crowd and injured two people. Two people are now injured. The police did nothing. The police pepper sprayed the, the protesters after that. Somebody just murdered peaceful protesters. And the cops' reaction is to pepper spray them. And people are still wondering why all of this stuff is happening. It's wild to me. It doesn't make any sense. I think the police cars were uh, set up as bait. Along the way, and I think you probably saw them in this video, there were several cop cars, um, unguarded, with nobody inside them, just set up on the side of the road. That seems very strange and peculiar. The unfortunate thing is uh, that somebody took the bait, or maybe somebody forced the bait to be taken. Again, I know I'm making some hypotheses and conjectures, but it's worth looking into. These are, these are realities that we have to face, that protesters get infiltrated, and then this violence happens, and then a narrative is spun by the media. It's sort of the way propaganda works. So what is going to be the central focus of this conversation? The, com the central focus of this conversation will then end up being... Uh, violent protesters. Boy, they looted and they rioted and oh boy, ta oh no, Target. Oh no, AutoZone. Oh no, McCormick and Schmidt's seafood eatery distribution or whatever the fuck. That becomes the conversation. But it's not. The conversation is and always has been what are we going to do about these violent cops that are killing our brothers and sisters in all of our com minority communities. What are we going to do about that? We want justice for the murder of countless innocent lives. Countless innocent lives. And people like me have made videos and talk about it in, our, in, in comedy and address it in a peaceful, nonviolent way, and you don't hear it. City after city, I've watched a video where this happens and the anger and the fury is justified and in, in some cases manipulated to become a violent escalation.
as I believe that it is in, in Pittsburgh. And I believe that I have shown you how and why it is. I'm glad that my friend is safe. I'm glad that uh, the, the people that were in downtown are safe. And I hope that the people that unfortunately got hit by some asshole in a Mustang recover. And we fucking put that person in prison because he also belongs in prison. All of this is happening for a reason. The media is going to spin it in a different direction and deviate the conversation, but don't let them. Stay on point. All of this is about what the fuck are we going to do about a racist, violent, unaccountable criminal justice system. What are we going to do about it? And for a long time, every solution that has been offered up by people like me, by the pacifists, by the, 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 the nonviolent civil disobedience types, they have been met with um, a lot of platitude and not enough action behind it. And now you don't have a choice. Because when it comes down to it, I don't have what it takes to do the riot stuff. And, you know, from the video I watched, there were no violent rioters. You know, the rioters got violent towards the cops. The cops sure did. The cops sure did. They sure did get violent, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did. Uh... We have gone unheard long enough. And perhaps the voices of people like me have been a little too quiet, but no longer. So my question to all those people that have been against talking about this problem, addressing this problem in any sort of legitimate way, is can you hear us now? Because holy shit are we being loud. And if you can't hear us, Things are only going to get louder. Take care of yourselves out there. Each other. The people in your community. Take care of them. Because those that are supposed to be serving and protecting you are not. And they are using various different tactics to ensure that we don't take care of each other. So don't fall for that shit. And take care of each other, please. Please.